Welcome, welcome, welcome to this new video. This time I am going to continue going over the Greenbone OpenVAS Administration Console. And this time I want to talk to you about the Scan tab. Now everything starts with the scan. As you can see here, if you want to run a scan in a network or on a host, you, you would go to Scan, you go to Tasks, and once you are there, I mean, this is where I'm at, you are going to have the option of creating a new task. And the tasks are going to be the task for you to run the scans, right? So you have um, three options right here. If you come over to uh, this icon and you hover over, you're going to have the option to start the uh, task wizard. And as you can see here, it's pretty simple. It's going to have the backend settings already pre-configured for you. The only thing that it's asking you is to enter the IP address of the host or network that you would like to perform the scan on, right? So, um, and as once you do it, just click on uh, Start Scan. So let me do that right here. Uh, for instance, I'm going to choose um, I'm going to choose that host right there. So. Actually, let me do one here. 172, 16.5.1. I'm going to scan my default gateway, right? And you do that. When you do that, you are going to notice that that task is going to be added to the task list. So if I come um, here somewhere, you are going to see that it's being added. And it has a status of requested. And this is where you want to pay attention to it. Go from requested to queue. Uh, and then it's going to go in progress, and whenever it has finished, it's going to tell you that it's done. So you got to keep an eye on this, or, or at least monitor the task. So once you have the task, and again, this is a simple task, and you come here to the, um, to the task list, there are many things you can do. Uh, and I'm going to show you that, that you can set a schedule, you can clone, you can edit, you can export. So let me do it, for instance, on one of these tasks on CNN.com. I'm going to come right here, and you'll see, and you'll notice that if I hover over this icon, it says Edit Task. So I'm going to be able to um, edit the specific task or the settings for the specific for the specific task, right? You can create alert, set up a schedule for that. Let's say that I want to set up a schedule. For this task, I just click on this icon. Every time that you see this icon with the little star on the upper right, it means create. So if I come here, I'm going to create a um, check uh, CN, CNN changes. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm using this name. The name could be anything you want. And then um, what time do you want to run this thing, right? Just do whatever you want to do. Put it in here. And then I'm going to uh, save it. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to save this task. And as you can see, now this task is on a schedule. You can also clone this task. Let's say that you have a um, pre-configured settings for a uh, task. right? So I did that. And as you can see here, it's going to show this is a clone of the previous task. And then you're going to have the option of editing this, whichever way you want. But at least you're going to have the uh, some pre-configured settings that were previously in that task, including the schedule. Now, most of the time, I would say, or at least in my case, most of the time I use the advanced task wizard. The reason for that is because you know I'm going to have more options when it comes to uh, selecting the type of scan that I would like to run. The default is full and fast, but you can do simply simple host discovery, or you can do the base, or you can even do the log for shell if you're looking for that specific vulnerability. Uh, you could do that. Uh, obviously, you're going to add the name here. So. Uh, Whatever name you would like to add is totally fine. And then you're going to have the option of, from here, you're going to have the option of selecting when you would like to run this, if you want to run this immediately, or if you want to have these on a schedule. 
and if you want to use credentials to do the scanning you're going to have the option of entering the SSH, SMB, VMware uh, credentials and then you will have the option of entering the email address that you would like to uh, send this report to. Now um, remember I'm running in a Docker edition for this so there has to be some configuration done for me to get the email reports but um, it's simpler to do that in Kali Linux if you install um, the tools to allow you to email out. Uh, maybe I'll create a video for that at one point. So that's why I choose the um, the advanced uh, menu for that. So I'm just going to do this and I'm going to change this to okay to a different so I'm gonna do this and delete it so this task is scheduled <clears throat> now there's one more thing I want to show you here on this menu on the task list when you run a scan for the first time that's gonna do what it does and it's gonna give you the uh, severity of the uh, of the vulnerabilities right in this case we have the severity uh, column in here and let's use this FTP host or a scan as an example as you can see I do not have anything here under trend but if I go down to FTP2 or if I go down to this host with high vulnerabilities or even scanme.org you're gonna see a uh, right pointing arrow what that means is that if you scan a host for the first time, you're not going to have any trends, right? It's, you're going to see only the results of the scan for that host. But if you scan the host the second time, this is going to show you a status whether the vulnerabilities increased, decreased, or remained the same. And as you can see here, when I ran the, um, the scan on this host, for the second time it tells me vulnerabilities does not change so that's a good feature to keep in mind when you are having this as part of the vulnerability management process you would like to know that when you run the scan for the second time on the same host that if there's a new uh, released vulnerabilities that it has been detected or if you have mitigated a vulnerability when you run the scan again you would like to see that uh, decrease right the vulnerability so uh, again so that is from the task menu right a lot of information here and lastly before I move to the other menu right from here you can restart or you can delete also the um, these scans that you have uh, configured for these tasks. So if we go over to reports, right? <clears throat> reports mean exactly what it is, reporting capabilities. Now I have more information than this, it just so happens that there is a pre-selected filter in here for severity 6 and 6.9 and above, so these are the only uh, the, the, the only uh, scans or results that show anything with 6.9 and above but I'm gonna delete that so I'm gonna see all my reports right in here so <clears throat> when you come here you can uh, if I come over for instance and you click on uh, the report for this you're gonna see just the report for the task but if you are interested in knowing what's going on with that host, you would have to go to results. This is where you're going to see more information. So when you come over to results, you can check on severity and also pay attention to these icons right here because this is going to show you the solution types. You can either, if you hover over, let's see if it happens, you can uh, use a mitigation or you can come here and you can use a vendor fix so on and so forth uh, just pay attention to this uh, if you're looking for instance in this case on this chart right let's, let me come over right here as you could see on the results I have uh, 46 um, items that have been identified as as high severity right 
so if you click on that pie chart that's going to open up those specific um, vulnerabilities that are classified as high then you can do your due diligence in here and do what you need to do and also it, it'll also also show you the IP address or the host that is being affected by that and the um, and the ports that are being affected so let me go back to my previous menu if you want to do the mediums right so you would come here <coughs> And that'll show you uh, the medium uh, vulnerabilities for that. Now, what else do we have in the scan? So if you go down to vulnerabilities, right? This is very useful. This is where you're going to see your vulnerabilities. Another section, and you're going to see the name of the vulnerabilities right here. And if you can, if you click on them, that's going to give you more description about the uh, vulnerabilities and it's going to show you when the CVSS date was calculated and released. This is pretty old. And again, this is for a um, made exploitable system that I have in my internal lab for testing. That's why it has all these high severity of vulnerabilities. And um, as you could see, something that you have to keep in mind, and again, when it comes to vulnerabilities by CVSS or vulnerabilities by severity class, it's up to you whatever you want to do in here, right? Like the higher the number, like if you have a CVSS, which is a calculation of the vulnerabilities versus the vulnerabilities, for vulnerabilities per class, you're going to get to the same uh, data, to the same information. Um, there's one more thing that I want to show you here. So let me go back to scans and tasks. When you run a uh, task, which means that you're running a scan over a host or over a network or host or segment, uh, right after these, um, or, or not right after, when you configure that, the system automatically is going to add that device that you're running the scan on or network to the target list, right? So if you come here, you're going to see this. So just keep that in mind. So this is where you're going to be adding targets in your configuration. And at the same time, if you go to the assets section, this is going to be what's being detected. So the system is going to detect and sort whatever information it collects from the scan and it's going to add it in the assets section of the um, menu. Uh, and again, right from here, you can do your search based on the um, the severities and you could see your host or th the same thing you were looking into before, right? So. But there's something pretty cool here. This graph is pretty cool. I like this. I believe that this is using the uh, the Nmap engine for this. You could do the same thing with Nmap that you see here, but obviously, um, you know, it's a dynamic graph. That's what I'm trying to say. So uh, obviously, the more hosts you add, the uh, the more you're gonna have. You're gonna have the host. Like it just so happens that I named the host the same as the IP address. And you can see the operating systems here, what type of operating system those hosts are running. And this is going to help you in your overall uh, vulnerability management and pen testing. If you want to use this for pen testing or, or network protection, you're going to keep an eye on whatever vulnerabilities are identified for these operating systems. So um, if, you come ho if you come over here and this time you select um, operating system from the assets tab you're going to see the operating systems that have been detected with the uh, most vulnerable operating system uh, charge in here so you can easily identify it or you know the the operating systems or hosts that are having problems for instance if i click here you're going to see that it's going to expand and it's going to tell you about the uh, latest severities for that right so and this is for ubuntu and you have the name here and uh, remember that in a previous video i also showed you that you can add different displays uh 
to your screen uh, and this can be on the uh, that'll be added to whatever menu you are in at that specific moment so if I am in the operating system under assets that's gonna be added there so let me just do this for the heck of that and I just added the same right but let me find something different okay so actually it you can add in or remove them right from here so in this video we covered the scans uh, menu and we cover the assets menu oh there's one more item here the uh, certificates that are detected over the scan if you do that you're gonna see that it has detected two search one valid and one is expired so this is pretty useful information too uh, maybe not for uh, vulnerabilities but for compliance right like if you do compliance uh, this is something you really want to keep an eye on that all your certificates are valid anywhere you're using them so again we cover scans we cover assets and we touched about the targets on the next video we're going to go more in depth about the configuration menu and we're going to cover these options right here so i hope you find this video useful i know that it is loaded with a lot of information but again if you like this video click on the like button subscribe to my channel leave a nice comment and help me uh, make this channel more popular I'll talk to you later and have a great day.